I've forgotten anything else. So I think we're ready to introduce our next uh, get and final guest, Barry J. Hughes. So let me uh, just give you a little bit of an introduction. Um, he's an Irish folk rock uh, singer-songwriter based out of Monaghan, and he merged into the music scene back in 2015, uh, just before his first release, um, which was called This Way Up. Um, he began touring across Ireland very quickly and across the world as well. So um, he's a very tra well-traveled man. He's done some amazing gigs. Uh, some notable venues that he performed in uh, were Whelan's and The Button Factory. And since then, he's released so many singles. Um, he's released three live albums and a live Christmas album as well just last year. Uh, so please welcome to the show, Mr. Barry J. Hughes. Just be honest with yourself. Oh, the crowd's loving you, man. The crowd's loving you. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm doing great. How are you, Keeper, man? I got a mic here. Ah, yeah, pick up your mic. Pick up a mic there for yourself. Whichever one you want there, yeah. You're on number three, okay. Is that helping anybody, yeah? Brilliant, yeah. No, great to see you. Yeah, you too. How are you too. keeping? I'm keeping good, yeah. This is a lovely setup. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know, I want to look all around me. It's cool, it's really yeah, cool. You're allowed to take a moment to just take it all in, Barry. You know, there's no, we don't have to rush into things. How are you doing? It's good to yeah, see you. Say yeah. hi to your fans. <laughs> <laughs> it's, That's it's, great. It's, it's absolute madness, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I was saying to the guys uh, like backstage that we're, we're so immune to this kind of applause, you know, here in this canned applause but you know it's it's good fun i think you know yeah yeah it's it's the best we can do right now i think and um it's it's something to look for for the future isn't it like you know it's given us a hint of sort of what what obviously we've missed and, and what we can kind of regain again but it's great because i mean you it hasn't completely halted for you i mean you kept going right through 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 the the pandemic, I'm sick of saying that word, but um, of course we all are. But you kept going, man. I mean, you built a great online community. Yeah, like you've yeah, got yeah. some great support online through YouTube. Is it mainly you're kind of doing stuff on YouTube or, or is it doing... Facebook Lives you've been doing? So when lockdown hit, um, like I was, supposed, I was supposed to do three or four gigs that weekend. And uh, I decided I would just do the gigs on, on Facebook. Basically, that's kind of cutting a long story short. And mm. then I did every Sunday evening, did a two or three hour gig for six months every Sunday. Yeah. And I did a couple for charity. Then I kind of, I, I vowed that I would do one charity gig per month and, uh, you know, gather people to the live stream and ask them to donate to... We did gigs for Irish Cancer Society and uh, As I Am for um, Autism Awareness and different charities. So... Yeah, I did. I wanted to give something back because people were, were very good in like supporting me and kind of cheering me on. So we have to do this for everything nowadays, don't we? So they weren't, you know, they weren't in the room. But <laughs> yeah, so I, I wanted to do something to, to give something back. So we did that. And then, as you said in the intro, released a couple of uh, live albums. Yeah, when I heard you saying all that, it's like, yeah, last, last Christmas. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So yeah, I just kept going because... I suppose, well, that's just me anyway. I just, I do like to keep going and uh, I didn't want to be coming out of lockdown or, you know, however long it was going to go on. We didn't know at the time, but I didn't want to be coming out of it with nothing to show for all that time I sat at home, you know. Mm. So did the six months gigs and uh, put together the couple of live uh, albums from two gigs that I did in 2000 and Christmas 2019, mm -hmm. so put them out online and um, did the launch gigs online too. And so then I kind of put the live stream gigs to the side and then I wanted to concentrate on myself. So I've just been kind of out cycling and walking and just, you know, taking, taking life as it comes and just taking it easy. So brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, that's what I've, I've been doing. I've seen every time I'm, I'm, I'm chatting to you or something, you're out and about. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm out and about. Can you, oh, Barry, can you send me a video for this? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll just send you a video in the, in the, in the natural. It's, uh, it's so funny the other day when you said, can you take a call? And I just, I have the phone was d pinging in my pocket. And I said, yeah, yeah, you like ring me whenever. 
turn the corner. So we're out country roads here now, turn the corner and this steep hill. I was going, I hope he doesn't ring me now because <laughs> I will just be out of breath. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I gave you some time, did I? I think I gave you like a 40 is. minute buffer. It just you worked out right. Did. Someone else he, rang he's me. He's not ringing me at all. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it all worked out. Uh, but it's great because, yeah, I guess out in Monaghan, there's, there's, is, is there more, there's more countryside, there's more kind of to, to sort of I go out my unload. door. Yeah. I go out my front door and uh, a two minute walk, I'm in the middle of the countryside. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it was so funny because I, I was actually thinking of, of you yesterday and this interview. Uh, so like, you know, wildlife, it's it's nothing amazing for Irish people. We, we've all seen it, but horses, cows, sheep and goats in the in the one trip. I was going to mm. have to tell him this because, you know, <laughs> but it's amazing to have all yeah. this countryside on my doorstep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and I have I've never had time to to go out walking for three hours every day or cycling, you know, we, so we I'm taking the time we, to do that. We now. don't think about those things, like how important it is to be out in nature, isn't it? Because we, I mean, I, I myself have spent a lot of time indoors on my computer, you know, and yeah, yeah. you just get lost in it almost, you know, and you yeah. get lost in this digital sort of way of life. And um, I definitely come back more refreshed or more kind of clear minded. It's like I unload a bit of yeah, yeah. myself into nature. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel like that yourself? Are you totally, feeling? Yeah. Totally. And, and I had a friend ask me recently, what do you listen to when you go out? I don't listen to anything. Mm. And he, he thought that was crazy. But I, yeah. I just totally uh, silent. Listen you know, to the world. I mean, it's pretty, that's it. it's pretty loud, actually, when it you is. think about it. There's it a is, lot of stuff is. going on. And, and, and I think, yeah. you know, it's a better way to experience it. I, I don't want a podcast or, or music in my ear when I'm out, mm. you know, taking a break from all of that. So, yeah. It seems to be I a habit still, of a lot of people, yeah. I still can't believe I'm here. It's crazy. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, this is my third time here, so I'm still Plus getting Plus I just used named out four wild animals on, on a TV. Just randomly. <laughs> Cows, sheep. Cows. I just thought I'd let, let you know that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. That's I'm a proud great. country man. Fair play. And like, uh, I saw something in the Back to Basics tour, you know, uh, during that uh, interview, which I always seem to, I know you laugh because like, I always mention that, right? All the time. But it was interesting. When, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to get into that, right? No, I'm laughing because you you could say anything because there's, there, it's it's <laughs> such, a, it was a funny couple of weeks in my life. Yeah. yeah. But um, I, actually, it was it wasn't even in relation to that, um, venture. It was more so about you speaking about yourself getting into music and you speaking about Monaghan, just on the topic still on Monaghan, that you never thought that there was like a music scene before until you sort of started playing music or sport, sp yeah, yeah. putting yourself out there as a musician. Yeah. And then I read somewhere that you kind of put yourself out there in 2015. So, but you started quite young as well as a musician, right? So yeah, from my understanding. What Funny, was kinda, I, tell us a little bit. I was about watching that. back that clip because um, I had to send it f to um, a, a local group that have a, an online um, shop, CarrickMcCross.ie, it's called, and they're doing a feature on me this week as it mm -hmm. happens. So I, I sent them that clip of that interview. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't know, was there a, an original music scene? That's what it was. Mm. Um, and then when I f was suddenly immersed in it, I was like, oh, everybody was playing music. But sure, I didn't know that until I started going playing gigs. And he plays, I didn't even know he played guitar. Mm. You know, that kind of stuff was coming at me. So, um, yeah, what was the question? Uh, well, I guess there was two questions about that. Yeah, it's just kind of um, what what as well took you did you did you take a while to kind of put yourself out there as oh, yeah. a musician, I suppose? Sorry, yeah. that was a confused. There was like a statement in there and a question. Yeah. Yeah, you were asking, uh, I started music at a young age, like five, I think, with piano lessons and then that moved mm. on to guitar. And um, But I, I was hitting the age of 30. Uh, I was working as a restaurant manager and I just, I, people, customers of mine had started to say to me, you know, you're really wasted here. You should be doing something with your music. We've heard you sing and you can play and we've seen you on stage, but, you know, occasionally. So I had this in my head and I was like, okay, I'm just, just going to go for it now. That's it. Wow. And uh, wow. made that decision and then went into studio and did the first EP. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. I just decided to go for it. You know, why not? Yeah. yeah. You know? And that was in your early 30 or that was when you turned 30, was it? Or that was like when 30? I turned 30. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to gauge the age now. Yeah. You're not money messing. Yeah. But um, no, it's, just, it's, it's for myself now because I, I turned, I'm 30, going 32. Right. And um, for me, I'm only recently starting to get into let's say the kind of journalistic or okay. pre presenting sort of thing. So sometimes it takes a while to kind of take that leap of faith almost in yourself. Yeah. Like to, to, cause it's, it's so easy for us. We're not brought up, I suppose, to kind of be the musician, maybe more so now, but maybe a, a while ago, it probably wasn't like that. Now there's more schools, right? There's more music schools and the musical career is sort of 
more normalized, I suppose. It, it seems it to be. Right, which is great, isn't yeah. it? Because a lot more musicians are, are, it's still very difficult to kind of get work in a way. It is, you know? but um, um, BIM is, is one of those schools or colleges that I hear about all the time. Mm. You know, I, I don't know when, when did BIM start? I don't know, but. It was only about six, seven years okay, ago. Okay, yeah. But like every second musician you meet in Dublin has been mm. to BIM or is going or is thinking about applying. Mm. Um, so you have that going on. You know, you didn't have that 10 years ago. So yeah, it's, it's I suppose you can make it a career now from the get go. Whereas yeah. I was leaving a career to kind of create something for myself. I suppose mm. the, 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 one of the reasons maybe I was so brave to do it was subconsciously I knew if it didn't work, I'd just go back and be a, a waiter you or a barman. You know, I could already, go, yeah. I could go back to that. Yeah, yeah. I could go back to that tomorrow. <laughs> Don't say that. It could happen. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Well, the thing is, the restaurants aren't open still, aren't they? For I you can't to, even do that. You can't then. even right, be technically. Okay. I mean, you could. They, they, they have the deliveries open now and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's interesting because I met you at the Crystal School sessions, I think, wasn't it? For yeah, that's time. that's right. Yeah, and that was like 2016, probably. Or probably. 15, probably uh, during the early stages. 15 of, or 16. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I was nervous that night. Were you? Yeah, I remember. I, I saw walking you as a in. confident kind of musician, like very sure in yourself. Yeah. Uh, Probably on stage, but yeah. um, I you know I was nervous, and I remember looking around when I came in. I was going, I don't even know who Kozak is or what he looks mm. like, so I had to, you know, suss that out. And even that alone was causing me great nervousness. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I was nervous that night, but I enjoyed it. I think I went back then, and I went back a few times. I don't yeah, know. Did yeah, I get yeah. through to you the, got the through. Next, yeah, you yeah. got through. I remember that, and um, because you had you have such a great stage presence about you, and sometimes you. that takes years to to perfect yeah so for me uh reading back and i can't remember speaking to you specifically the conversation we had or was like sometimes i'm too busy and preoccupied or whatever um but then reading uh, about yourself and saying oh wow barry like kind of released his first ep in like 2016 or early or just between 15 and 16 or however and i was like that's that's quite recent enough and i was, mm. like, I was trying to gauge of like where, where where when did we meet and stuff and i was yeah. like i thought you were playing music for years and years and years publicly so it's amazing how it's natural yeah. for, i know you're performing you started performing early and stuff but yeah. performing on stage and promoting yourself is yeah, totally yeah. different than being behind the Big scenes time. and doing a little bit it's it's that massive leap of faith so yeah. it's it's kind of in your nature almost isn't it it is because i always wanted to be on stage i, al mm. I always wanted that you know because i remember going to see gigs with with my parents and uh just i was always watching in amazement of of the lights and the effects and uh, you know whatever I, mm. I just wanted to be that guy on stage doing whatever that guy was doing at the time yeah, yeah. so when i got up there i had the energy and i had the want for it so um yeah and like i'm i don't know I, you, you never really have your stage presence perfected, I reckon. I think my stage presence and my nature on stage is always changing. I was thinking, you see, I've been thinking about all these things recently, you know, because we've had time to, and I think it's always changing. Um, I'm more, I'm more relaxed on stage now, I reckon. Hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's just. It's interesting because like now you're not on stage in a way. You're you're kind of speaking to a camera directly, right? So that's your stage right now. Yeah. I wonder. Will you be relaxed once you've got loads of people all of a sudden in front of you? And will there be an excitement? And and how how will that you know? Yeah, I think I have a space in mind that I want to do a gig in when whenever I can, and I reckon I will be relaxed. And because I stayed with it for for the the majority of last year, and I brought people with me, and I and I gained new followers and built a new fan base, and kind of I will say nurtured the fan base that was there. I reckon the people in whatever room I'm in doing that gig will be, uh, you know, 100% behind me. Any audience is, but I think it's going to be a special and I'm going to wait it out until the moment's right to do that gig. Brilliant, you know? brilliant. Yeah, you definitely s seem to have like a really good following of people. And and um, I think it is because you the way you present yourself as well, it's, it, it feels genuine. You know, your music is genuine as yeah, well. Yeah. And I know it sounds cheesy to say, obviously, one of your songs being called Honest. Yeah. It, it, and, and you can see sort of the, the pureness, I suppose, about what's coming from you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It is that genuine Barry J. Hughes, which is, which is lovely. It's amazing. Especially for, for a guy to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. And it's amazing that music, music gives that ability for even guys to kind of express themselves because it can be difficult for guys to express themselves in normal yeah you're right actually yeah so I never like, yeah I never yeah. yeah well thank you as well for for those kind words but yeah like anything i write or anything i release anyway is is always 
it's always genuine, you know. Mm. Haven't written anything in ages, yeah, in a really long time. I don't know why I'm putting that out there, but I haven't. No, it's, um, it's, I just yeah. haven't I haven't anything to write about. Well, you had um, you were planning on an album release, wasn't it? Back at late two thousand or early two thousand nineteen, you had a release. Yeah, so it's kind album. of we were building that myself and uh, a guy I work with back home, Martin O'Neill. Um, who goes under the the name of Country Folk Records? Um, we were we so I released an EP with four tracks on it. Three of them were recorded with Martin, mm-hmm. and I was kind of building momentum. And we were we have a really good working relationship in the studio. It's it's crazy how much I enjoy working with him, and he's really on the same page as me. Mm, um, that's great. And my style of music wouldn't be his predominantly what he would go for or what he would play or what he would generally record. Mm. But uh, we we hit it off straight away. So I'm hoping to start that up again mm-hmm. and get that momentum going and get an album together, um, a studio album. The live yeah. albums are good, but I, I do want to, I, I want to have a, a studio album under my belt. Yeah. But I remember hearing years ago that you should never release or, well, this person's opinion was not to release a studio album until you have a, a really strong fan base, a fan base that's going to buy your album. Yeah, you especially know. if it's a single entity, Absolutely, like a single yeah. release. Yeah. Like a couple of singles is good. Yeah. Uh, it's, a you know, teasers for people. Um, but like, I don't know, I'm no expert on it because I, I don't know what the right way of releasing music it's, is it's these a days. Difficult I really one. don't. Yeah, it really is difficult to navigate. But uh, you, you were doing well. So you, you released the EP in the end, right? And it was just right. to be honest. So that was, that yes. was what you ultimately kind of um, decided to release. Uh, yeah, we put a end. kind of a bit of a comma there. So we're going to yeah. finish that that so sentence, are you, hopefully. Are, are you going to then exp- expand on the EP itself then to, to make that into an album, do you yes. reckon? Is that the idea? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah, yeah hopefully <laughs> use... Two, definitely two or three of the tracks of the EP anyway. Brilliant. Three out yeah. of four. Um, yeah. yeah. Replace the sound of your voice and honest. Is that? And diving in. I think. And diving in was the first one, yeah, right? Diving yeah, in yeah, was yeah. the first one. Yeah. And you had the remix only last year as well. That's right. Least, yeah. Yeah. I have my notes. I'm checking my notes <laughs> yeah, here. I just yeah. want to make sure that we. I probably should have read them as well <laughs> before I came on. <laughs> no, these are my cheat notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A couple of, yeah. Just a couple of, of cheeky remixes. Brilliant. Um, just to keep things going you know awesome great great stuff and how did you feel being back um uh playing some music like on in a, in a sort of studio environment well that day um i thoroughly enjoyed that day i really 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 enjoyed it just hearing yourself in the in the cans and the guys here looked after me so well as did you but just the sound was lovely and, and i was just so comfortable you know mm. and i knew coming up on the bus i was like i'm going to sit in a low seat i had it all thought out i knew how i was going to tackle the the session and um yeah i really enjoyed it thanks Brilliant. for thanks for having me awesome. that day yeah no thanks thanks for popping yeah. on and, and taking the time as well it's a pleasure uh Working and, and dealing with musicians. Great. Is, like is that it? Yeah, that's how we can finish. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the uh, I'll give you the the fifty quid in the mail. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the checks in the mail. I'm um, giddy. I'm giddy today. So. Yeah, no, just look, enjoy yeah, it. Be giddy, man. This is this is your segment. So okay. so it's all G. Um, we've got a couple of comments. Um, we've got Terry Penny. Those Sunday gigs and charity gigs were absolutely amazing and kept many of us going during the lockdown. Uh, he is an amazing live performer. Great fun to go on, Baz. That's there Terry from Limerick. Yeah. Yeah. Thank um, you, Terry. Killian Murphy Baz is a bar is a gentleman of the industry. As is Killian. That's a lovely one. Gentleman of yeah. the industry. I, I would have met him in, in, in the early days as well, two thousand and fifteen or sixteen. Um and we haven't met much since, um, once or twice, but it, we always keep in touch and I know he's releasing a lot of music himself at the minute. So, and I, yeah. I always love his songs. When I see the Killians releasing music, I, I, I know I'm going to like it. It's really Brilliant. upbeat, and uh, you know I love it. Yeah. Thanks, Killian. Killian, I know Killian from 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 the Griffith College days, long time ago, yeah. maybe ten years ago, and a fantastic musician. It's great to see him releasing music as well. Um, Moc Seven Triple Nine, great to see Barry. Hope to see him live again at some point. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so no questions, guys. So we've no Q and A. If anybody wants to pop in a question for Barry, please uh, ask me feel anything. Free to do AMA. You know, ask I did say anything. on my social media during the week, ask me anything. Yes, I dare you. Go now on. is the time. Now yeah. is the time. Take advantage. And um, yeah, so Barry, I guess okay. So let me let me think of something we can chat about while we wait for maybe the last. Um, oh, brilliant! Oh, thank you, Moc. Actually, you did pop that idea in my hand because you you actually performed in Poland, and. Um, this was the uh which festival was this one in the in the was it in the north polska era polska era okay in ruda śląska ruda śląska 
Yeah, well, it's not bad. R- it's all right. R- you got to roll the or a bit. You have to roll the or. Ruda. Ruda. Ruda Shlonska. I think some of the guys might be tuned in, I, I think. <laughs> so um, you, you played there three years in a row? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, I did. That's mm. mad, yeah. Um, Tell us a little bit about that. The leader, uh, as we call him, the leader of the gang, we, we you know, myself and Greg Clifford are, are good friends and we've, we performed there the last uh, two years. Um, but the leader of the gang, as we call him, is Wojciech and... Um, there he is actually in the comments. Good, good yeah. man, Dan. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. But um, Wojciech saw me at an open mic in Arklo one night uh, when I was doing that whole trip around the country um, in the early days, as I say. And in 2017, I think, he rang me and asked me would I be interested in travelling to Poland to play at Polska Era. That was basically the phone call. And uh, the answer, of course, was yes. And I was back the following year and the following year. So, that yeah, 2018-19. And um, he's just been a great supporter of mine and he has a great group of, of people, volunteers, in um, Ruda Śląska. Ruda Śląska. What he said. And um, yeah, it's just, it's always, you know what, I, Greg actually, I think, said it last, the, the last time we were there. Um, we were treated like superstars. We really were treated like superstars. It was the nearest thing I've got to being like, feeling like a rock star yeah. was when we go over there. Wow. Because uh, wow. they just do everything for us. They're so kind and, you know, everything's organized well in advance and so well organized. And then you get on stage. We haven't even got on stage yet. Then you go on stage and, you know, people know your songs and they're singing them at you. And it's just mad. Like, and, you know, I've, I've heard big stars saying that. That you know, hearing your songs sung back to you, it's a crazy feeling. It is, mm. it, you know. Now I couldn't necessarily hear them, but you can you can see people are singing along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the likes of Honest and yeah, it's 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 uh, it's great. I'm actually Amazing. wearing their T-shirt underneath here. I think Pulse Gear T-shirt. Fantastic, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's just representing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was three years in a row. Yeah, yeah and I'm maybe. hoping that it'll happen again. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. it's it's very it's very random when I when I when I saw that in, in the bio and I, I think I, we, we talk, I think we spoke about it was it yourself because I spoke obviously with Ian and with Greg uh, I don't know if Ian was, was part of it because of, of, I know you did the back to of the Poland yeah it was a Greg no. and yourself was myself it, was and Greg, Greg yeah. and Ella yeah. English B was there um, mm. two years with us as well Chalice. right 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 yeah um, so yeah we had good fun the last time we were there, we got to travel a bit. Uh, we went into Krakow. Krakow? Yeah, yeah. Um, Krakow. Krakow. Um, but like, that's hard oh, to say. <laughs> we should try this my, out in the audience members, see how they get on. My parents are Polish, so obviously, yeah, no, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a very so good, we got to see more of, of the country and... Um, that's a lovely city. Yeah. That's a lovely city, yeah. A lot of it was like flat, absolutely devastated, you know, they had to rebuild yeah. a lot of it, yeah. It was a fab city yeah, with yeah. loads of funny stories. I can't even get into any of them because the stories are too long, but finding the key for the Airbnb was just, you know, we were so tired and uh, worn out from, from the, the gigs the two nights before. And then we got to crack off and trying to find the Airbnb and... You know, it was just, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious. I'd say tour, the whole touring vibe, the energy of it anyway, is, is is definitely incomparable. I mean, just to be able to tour. And I know you's obviously the Back to Basic, we just touched on it as well. You did the 15 gigs, was it across Ireland or however? Yeah. And uh, that's all, that must be amazing as well. Experience, you know, to kind of pile them all in together. And it's just day day by day, sometimes two gigs a day, right? And, yeah. and you just have to keep going. And uh, it's an amazing adventure. It is. And, uh, it really is. Yeah. I think the, 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 the real tour feeling came when we got to Galway because we were in Galway for like three three nights. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was, we were really on tour then, you know. And mm. um, we did a couple of radio sessions and I think we visited the college bar. We didn't play, but we, we were supposed to. Anyway, long story again. And um, yeah, so the touring vibe is good. Yeah. But I always love going to the airport and knowing that I'm... Leaving. You know, yeah, you're... Ah, uh, yeah, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Not in a bad... It's, it's, oh, no, yeah, of course. It's the whole yeah. excitement. The adventure's beginning, like... Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's like yeah. touring on, uh, touring on another level. The almost, or... Big time, in a positive yeah. way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah and just the fuss they make over a guitar, you know. It's kind of, you yeah, know, it's annoying, yeah. but the other people are looking at you going... 
Oh, he's a rock star. Yeah, what band possibly. Is he in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. he's carrying drugs. <laughs> oh no, it turns out he's just he's just a, a singer songwriter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's okay. Yeah, interesting. It, it, interesting way to carry drugs. Like it, imagine in your in your like obvious guitar case. Don't know uh, where I went there. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's no, up there with sheep and goats and everything. You know what? I'm gonna edit this Somebody all in. And this is gonna be. <laughs> It's going to be an interesting edit in the end. Uh, Killian's actually asking a question there uh, to yourself, Barry. Uh, do you think that the songs will flow once the country opens up again? He says it's a weird time to write at the moment. You mentioned obviously you have nothing yeah. to write about yourself. What do you reckon? Out external um, experiences will, will kind of get you going. Yeah, I was speaking to somebody recently and the word I used was energy, right? So mm. I'm very good at, at writing when the energy is there. And I don't mean when I have the energy, I mean when I'm moving, when I'm when I'm touring, when I'm playing, when I'm exhausted, when I'm meeting loads of people. Um, that's when ideas come to me. But, you know, I've just been kind of sitting around and not doing a whole pile, musically mm. speaking. So I'm hoping that the songs, the songwriting will flow after this. And definitely when, when the venues and, and, and things like that open, my songs will be will be flowing more inspiration even just the come. pub gigs like you know anything really at mm. this stage you know and i and i love my pub gigs hotel yeah. gigs all that sort of stuff i love that yeah, yeah. you know because I, I i play a wide variety of stuff for those type of gigs as well ballads mm. and and you know a bit of everything so i'm looking forward to even doing a pub gig yeah great you sound like you were you were gigging a lot per week were you just before the yeah well the it's it's yeah. my my sole income, like yeah. it, it really is. You didn't uh, singer songwriter nights and stuff like that as well, would you? I don't do many of them anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I would do them maybe on invite, but you know, at the start, I was kind of going looking for them uh, mm -hmm. to get the name out there. And I, I, I reckon I worked hard for maybe a year or two and did that and met a lot of people all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, but then I kind of concentrated on on writing more and getting the stuff recorded and. And then at the end of the day, Kozak comes down to making a living out of it. So, yeah, you know, so I kind of concentrated a lot on my wedding work then. I kind of put a lot of energy into that as well and built up that side of the business. So it's kind of split It's split into two. You have the Barry J. Hughes and then you have the, the Barry Hughes uh, wedding Ooh. singer without the J. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> there we go. We got corporate Barry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's great because, I mean, visiting your website, I mean, you've got everything there. You've got some great merch as well for sale. So, I mean, you're definitely uh, pushing it in a good direction. Like, you know yeah. how to sort of sell your brand, but ultimately, like, you're still you're hitting a load of birds at one stone, like you're still expressing yourself, you're still giving the true, true, truth to, to your own expression, uh, but also you're not, you know, doing it for nothing. Like, cause it, it, it is, it, you need to receive something back even yeah. on an energetic level from people. You're, you're putting your lot of yourself out there as a performer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. so it's it, it's good. I think what you're doing is is great, you know, and it's yeah. fair play to you, you know? Yeah, and, and it's it's been it's been good so far mm. people and the, the fans and and supporters have been good to me so and they're keeping me going and i can pay my bills and i can pay my mortgage and do all that so that's the important thing brilliant you know brilliant amazing i'm happy with that well i'm happy for you man 